I just want to be at his best as my brilliant as I can, you know what I mean? If it makes some way, it makes some way, if it doesn't, it doesn't. Like Jack Dempsey, there wasn't anything Muhammad Ali wouldn't try for money. Uh, it was something that was blowing the imagination, a wrestler with a fighter. Everybody used to, you know, say, let's have a wrestler. How would a wrestler do with a fighter? And there was pro and con, and you had that bit with the karate guys with a fighter. So that caught Muhammad's imagination. He wanted it, and he felt he could beat a wrestler. Japanese wrestler Antonio Inoki held some of the first MMA fights in the 1970s. One of these took place between Inoki himself and famed heavyweight boxer Muhammad Ali on June 25, 1976. The match generated a lot of interest in mixed style competitions. The purpose of the event was to see which fighting style would be the most effective in a real fight. Eventually, all of this led to the first UFC event in 1993. Athletes ranging from strikers to submission artists from around the world competed in this minimum rules combat event to be crowned the ultimate fighting champion. Fighters began merging different styles of fighting together and what resulted is modern day mixed martial arts. Since the dawn of the new millennium, the sport took a surge in popularity, with big names like Quinton Jackson, Chuck Liddell and Randy Couture. The acquisition of former professional wrestler Brock Lesnar in 2009 solidified the UFC as a box office sensation. With its growing popularity felt around the world, it has spawned numerous other MMA clubs and Carlisle is no different. Originating in Brazil, Vale Tudo is Portuguese for anything goes. Vale Tudo takes the most effective combat techniques from styles such as Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, Sambo, Wrestling and Western Boxing. This is Paul Thompson, a Carlisle native and 13-year MMA veteran. I had 14, yeah. four fights that is. Uh, I've only won four mines, but I was tending to operate at a higher level than I should have been because um, the instructor Stuart, he'd get guys saying, have you got someone to fight this guy? And I'd just say, yeah, I'll fight him. When I probably shouldn't have been fighting these guys, you know, I should have just said, no, he's too good for me, but I ain't bothered. Fought a couple of times in Carlisle, really. Because when I first started fighting, there was no shows around here, so I had to go further afield to fight. So I sort of first got into this. Uh, I was the only cage fighter, as you call it, in the city. But this is the only gym that really did it, so sort of the innovator. <laughs> Well, it was sort of an accident, really. I'd watched all the early UFCs, the no, when I watched it, it was no gloves, anything goes stuff. And I quite liked it, but I thought, I'm not doing that, you know what I mean? I'm not, in real life, I'm not violent or aggressive or anything. So I thought, I'm not going to do anything like that. It's nice to watch, but I just happened to come to Stuart's class one day. A friend said, come to this. I was like, I'm lazy. I don't want to do anything energetic, but I went down. Stuart Hall, the head trainer at Valley Tudo, is already an accomplished athlete, weightlifter, bodybuilder, rugby player and boxer. And he was also responsible for hosting the first and ongoing cage fighting tournaments in Carlisle.
when I first got into it, I didn't intend to fight. I just was having a bit of a laugh and stuff. And I started fighting. Like, the fighting was hard on the body. And I couldn't play golf, but I could fight. And that's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Golf was too energetic for me. <laughs> Many fighters draw inspiration from those that have achieved at the highest level. I like, jo I like Jose Aldo. One of these men will probably get a shot at the champ and right off the bat, it is over. It is absolutely over. How is that for explosiveness? Um, the moment I'm saying I like, I like Conor McGregor's attitude, like the whole fuck it, I'm not asked to a fight, I'll fight him, I'll fight. I'm going to steal the show, trust me on that, I'm stealing the show, I'm going to make him miss, he's going to hit air and he's going to hit the floor. Diego Sanchez, you know, fighters like that, but yeah. Oh, he got hurt! Wow, a I used to take a little bit of recreational drugs, nothing major, but I used to dabble now and again, but this is, I haven't taken anything for about like 13 years. This has got, it's got fit and everything. I never used to think about being fit, but now, even now I don't fight, I still train in the gym as hard as I would if I was fighting. I mean, it's very violent, but nobody in here would be going out on a Saturday night bashing people up. We get a few of them called hard men coming down here. They last about two, ses two sessions and they're gone. They can't handle it, because they can't bully you and intimidate you, you know what I mean? So generally, all fighters I've met and fought, I haven't met one who I think of, you know what I mean? Because it's quite vicious. But it's just when you get in there, turn it on, when, it, when it's finished, it's done. And probably 99% of the guys are really sound. Unlike boxing, because they're a lot of, you've got a lot of attitudes in boxing, you know what I mean? Set up in January 2012, New Blood Martial Arts is a completely non-for-profit club, with all money being put back into new equipment and training facilities. The name New Blood reflects the goal to inject some new talent into the Carlisle MMA scene. The club's vision was to create the new breed of fighter and to take the stigma away from MMA fighters being men who only think with their fists. Having started off in a parish hall in Southern Carlisle training twice a week, they moved to their current gym in May 2012, located in the centre of Carlisle. After moving into the unit, the club then purchased a boxing ring to help the students learn their ring craft and get used to the confined space which they encounter when they compete. The club started going from strength to strength. It wasn't long before the club had funds to purchase a cage. New Blood was the first club in Cumbria to have an MMA cage and are still the only club who have an octagon, a professionally shaped MMA cage. I've been training for two years now. So. And how are you finding it? It's good. It's hard work. It's hard work. It's, 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 uh, it's really good. It's better than going. I used to go to the gym all the time and the rest of it. And that. This is a lot more interesting. It's a lot more physical and fun. You find it's a challenge? Oh, it's a challenge, yeah. I mean, especially when you go into a camp ready for a fight and you start training up six times a week and sometimes twice a day. It's really hard. Yeah. Your body, body soon feels it. I just do it just for the fun of it, really, just for the. I enjoy the sport, and if my body keeps telling us I can do it, I'll do it. I mean, I'm at the wrong end of the scale for age-wise compared to a lot of the young ones that are into it now and that. But I just enjoy the, enjoy everything that goes with it, and just carry on with it. Like, so. Get a lot of lads that train and train and train and never fight. Yeah. Some of them don't want to. Yeah. So I'm glad that I've done 
the whole aspect of it in the training and the fighting just to see where it goes. It's getting bigger, it's getting bigger and bigger. We used to have a couple of lads that used to come and help train and help coach here from Carlisle and one of them now is fighting on Cage Warriors, which is one of the biggest European fight shows. It's not just boxing, it's not just Thai boxing, it's not just Jiu Jitsu, mm. it's everything mixed into one. So it's a lot more to it, you know what I mean? You do get lads that come into it. Some lads that came here and had a go that have been around in boxers. It's totally different. Yeah, you can stand and fight. The moment you go to the ground, it's a different game. So you've got to be able to train in every aspect to be prepared to go with it. As the head of New Blood Gym, Stavi has been training in Muay Thai for 12 years and started with Christian Percival of Dragon's Gym in Carlisle. While doing Thai, Stavi also dabbled in boxing, starting him off in the world of mixed martial arts. He trained with various clubs, but after deciding he could do better on his own, he opened his own martial arts club. He started teaching Muay Thai until a boxer asked to be trained by him. He agreed and after three months took the boxer to the Carlisle Heavyweight Championship match, which he won. After this success, he was inundated with fighters wanting to be trained by him. In terms of coaching, Stabby likes to dissect the students and coach them based on their strengths so no fighter is the same, ensuring each fighter is as good as they possibly can be. A lot of like what we do, a lot of these like clusters on license, so you get a lot of people think that it's back in the days and that, but it's not, it's because it's a multi skill Course. It's, it's totally different, like it's, yeah. you know I mean, I think it's wrong, a lot of the negative yeah. things towards the sport. And certainly a lot of that is people that haven't actually got involved in the, in the sport. Do you know what I mean? They just see the people going in a cage and fighting. It's, it's not, it, if you look over the last two, three years, and how much it's raised now, and it's only going one way. It's just going to keep going up and up and up. Because what you're getting now, you're getting a lot of lads that maybe were into boxing, a lot of lads that were maybe interested in Thai boxing, and now wanting to take this to the level. So everyone's wanting to step onto the next level. So I think it'll just continue to go and go. Well. And in the end, I think it will take over a lot of these spots. It's quite good for a small city. Um, there's two MMA clubs and there's lots of boxing clubs. So I think it's, uh, it's quite a lot of people doing it. I was watching um, the, the, the Omo fight. I come across that on Bravo. Uh, the Forest Cup and Stephen Bond fight. Uh, I think you have to get in the UFC to, to make a living or Bellator in America. I think on UK shows it's hard to... Like a lot of them uh, coach full time and fight. You can do it that way. Um, just fighting I think it's very hard. Uh, full time wage I think. Yeah. It's more people that don't really know what's going on. Uh, but if you just clicked on a fight and then uh, someone was caught and there's a bit a brawl like uh, a leather contest in a week. People don't think it is, they don't see the training that goes into it. So I think it's the, the purest sport you can get. It's like one on one. Um, that's the most experienced. The most like, people like Saint Pierre are the most trained athletes in the world. So yeah, and I think if you actually when they talk to people about it and they understand a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Clubs, there's not many idiots do it really. Yeah. They'll turn up once and then don't like the hard work, so they go. So. A lot of people that train it are um, good lads. Because um, only recently last year I've started actually cutting weight in the fights and, and that's been a bit of a struggle. Uh, I, train, I train six days a week, uh, four times MMA and twice at the gym, trying to do circuits or something. And uh, I normally let myself go on a Sunday. <laughs> Through the success of the UFC, MMA has become a cultural phenomenon that transcends all forms of entertainment. From talk shows to music to movies, the stars of this industry have ventured into these other forms of entertainment after the fighting world opened the door for them. The people of Carlisle know that this isn't the UFC, but they are passionate about what they do. They have been influenced by the work of these famous stars and thrive to do the best they can. 
the best. Yeah. Best change, change your life. Whether they make it big or not, they enjoy and respect the sport and appreciate the training and discipline that goes into it. While some may see it as a blood sport, it's hard to deny the dedication involved in MMA with those who train wanting to be as good as they can be. MMA isn't just a sport, it's an art, and a misunderstood art at that. Thank you.